Welcome to the Enlighten Up Podcast, where I am going to take you into a deep exploration of what it means to exist in this current reality. We are going to raise your vibes, open your mind, expand your heart, and dive deep into the wondrous mysteries and possibilities of this lifetime. There's been a spiritual catalyst that has set in motion the awakening process of many across the globe to return to the knowingness of self and unite what has been separated. Together, we're going to bring light into that darkness. We're going to remember the joy of living But most of all, we're going to turn up the volume of our own eternal power and do the thing we're here to do. Welcome back to the Enlighten Up podcast. I am super stoked today to introduce you all to Kelly Thebo. She's a leading channel and spiritual teacher. And after many unexpected encounters with a variety of UFOs, she underwent a profound spiritual awakening with the help and guidance of a group of energies now referred to as the collective. Bringing a candid message of empowerment and love, Kelly now serves as their channel. Having stepped out in faith and leaving behind 30 years of experience in accounting, technology, and real estate, she's now living a life of purpose and service to those looking to transform their own experience. Kelly and the collective have clients in 10 different countries worldwide, including the U.S., and other powerful workshops, webinars, and courses online. Complimentary channels can be found at kellythebo.com where you can also sign up for her newsletter, and I highly suggest you do, to join the collective community membership and be kept abreast of her social media and podcast launch in 2022. How exciting, Kelly. Welcome to my podcast. So good to have you here. Thanks so much for inviting me, Nicole. Oh my goodness. So I found you because of Phil Good, and I'm sure a lot of people found you because of Phil Good. He was so gracious to, to post and uh, mention one of the channels, channelings that you did with the collective for the beginning of September. And when I tuned into that, I was blown away. And I've already kind of prepped my audience on one of my last videos that you were coming on and what we're going to talk about and how much I loved your channeling because one of the unique aspects of the message that's coming through you from the collective is that it is truly empowering to the sovereign individual. And Mm -hmm. it is not about what I like to call fluffing the auras of all these light workers and fluffing their way up into 5D. Uh, It's really grounded. It's really solid advice. And it doesn't, it doesn't work on one side of the polarity. It's really solid for everyone. Yeah, I agree with you. I really think one of the things that makes the collective different, uh, you know, they don't really get into the what, what we refer to as the airy fairy. You want me to say that again? <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I'm muting my mic on my end. So, okay. Sorry, everyone. I just, for some reason, my throat just, <clears throat> excuse me. So we're good. <laughs> so keep You're going. Okay? All right. All right. Yeah, one of the things I really love about the collective is their candor and the fact that they are more interested in the experience we're having as humans than they are necessarily in covering all it is to be multidimensional. Being multidimensional is part of being human. It's a given. Uh, We're an aspect of source. The spiritual nature of who we are is a given. What they focus on is the human experience, the day-to-day right now in your life, what is happening for you, how to deal with that, how to be in the world and still be divine. Uh, It is a very grounded message. And I like to think that it's a very helpful message. The feedback that I get from my clients is that it's, it's pertinent to their lives. It's not just something that they think about when they're meditating. It helps them with real life situations. 
Uh, and that's what's important to me. I'm, I'm here to help. I'm here to serve. Um, you know, we're happy to have, you know, big, large, expansive metaphysical conversations. Uh, but for me, it comes down to what's happening in our world right now, what's happening with each of us as individuals, and what I can do to help with that. I think it's important, and I love that they focus more on the aspect of the human experience, because right now, every human on this planet really needs to be focused on this current reality. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot going on, and we came here into this body and this lifetime to shift using our multidimensional um, uh, selves but to mm -hmm. really work within this reality and to understand there's so many lessons that we're learning through the, diff the, the different polarities, um, what's really happening right now. I feel that this is a huge masterclass. 2020 and 2021 has been like a major masterclass for a lot of us in many different mm -hmm. ways, including those of us who may who may have even considered, you know, ahead of the curve a little bit. I think we all have um, things that have been coming up that are challenging all of us in many ways we weren't expecting. I agree with you. You know, the collective teaches that uh, every belief you have is a belief about yourself. How we process our world, how we're in our world, how we function as multidimensional beings, being here, willing to be human. We came here to be human, not to try to escape that or to rise above it but to elevate the experience of being human. I, I agree with you on that 100%. So being a human, <laughs> you've had quite the transformation uh, from have, yeah. what you used to be doing to now. So how did that all start for you? What was, what was the catalyst? You know, the catalyst in a nutshell was seeing UFOs. But I want to say at the outset of sharing those experiences with you, the collective are not in those UFOs. The collective are not what we would consider extra extraterrestrials. They're not ETs. They're consciousness. They refer to themselves as energy with consciousness. They say that they're our peers. They are what we are when we're not having the human experience. You know, there's many aspects of us everywhere in all dimensions. Uh, there's an aspect of you that is dwelling just like the collective is dwelling as energy with consciousness, uh, seeking to make a difference in a variety of planes of existence, connecting frequentially with humans and many other forms of consciousness. That's what they say that they are. The UFOs, I believe, were used as a way to wake me up. Uh, you know, all of us have this point of belief, regardless of what it is, it doesn't matter what it is that we just base our whole world on. We base our worldview, our behavior, our other beliefs fall under the umbrella of, you know, what do I think my world is? I had never really thought that um, other civilizations or other forms of consciousness didn't exist as much as I just really didn't give it a lot of thought. Uh, it really wasn't something that was real high in my consciousness, at least I didn't think so, uh, until you're actually confronted uh, with one of these spaceships. And for me, it was a series of events that escalated uh, to the point where, you know, I was actually quite concerned about it. <laughs> well, okay, so <laughs> you know? how, how were you confronted by the spaceship? What was it exactly that happened? You know, the first time that I saw one, I was actually reading the Seth material. Uh, those of your listeners who are familiar with channeling, will, will, that will ring a bell. And I had heard about the Seth material from uh, Regina Meredith on the Gaia Network. Uh, I had... Uh, been going to church. I wasn't raised a Christian, but had been functioning as a Christian for about 10 years and was becoming very disillusioned with that for a variety of reasons. And uh, started to just, you know, tune into other things. When we start to wake up, we start to notice that things are available, information's available that we didn't notice before. And uh, so I somehow I found the Gaia Network. I think I saw an ad on YouTube uh, for it. And I tuned in, I found Regina's show and I liked it because she had a variety of guests on the show about a variety of topics. Uh, it wasn't focused on any one thing, which I found very interesting, being that I had no metaphysical, whatever you want to call them, alternative belief systems at all of my own. And uh, so someone on there had talked about this book. So I went out and read it. And uh, I was reading the Seth material. It was about 2 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I decided I was tired and it was time to go to bed. My husband had already gone to bed. He had to go to work the next morning. And I went into the bathroom to use the restroom. And, you know, the shades are down in there all the time for a reason. I don't know why, but I went to the window and I opened up the shade and I looked out and there was a UFO uh, hanging over my neighborhood. And uh, what did I it look like? What, like? what was the shape? And <clears throat> it was multicolored. Uh, UFOs are 
you know, people see them in different ways, but one of the things that you will notice immediately is that there seems to be an energy field around it. Uh, some of the ones that I have seen have been relatively stationary and you can see that energy field pulsing around them. Some of the ones I've seen, they actually seem to appear to be tumbling. And this one was, and it was that tumbling morphing action that really caught my attention. It obviously was not a star. It obviously was not a plane. Uh, my father was in the military for 30 years. He was a chief master sergeant in the Air Force, and he actually, at his last uh, installation, ran the propulsion shop. I've spent all my life around airplanes of every every shape and form. Uh, I knew that this was not that. And uh, so I, <clears throat> I ran out and got some binoculars and was looking out the living room window, and it just was real apparent that it was it was a UFO. And... Uh, Few thing, other things happened. You know, I tried to wake up Rick. Uh, Rick I was going to say, did, did you wake your husband up? <laughs> <laughs> I did, and he went to look at it, and he he couldn't see it. He could see it, but he just didn't interpret it as being a UFO. He said, "I don't know what that is." Yeah, I'm just going to go back to bed. It was really odd because Rick is, you know, ancient aliens and UFOs. He was very much into that, and I wasn't. <laughs> so I was really surprised by his reaction. <laughs> Uh, my son was living with us at the time, um, and he was down in the basement gaming. He was in between apartments. Uh, he had ended one lease, and there was another place he wanted to go, and it wasn't available yet. So he was living with us for a little bit. And I ran downstairs and said, you know, Mike, I think I'm seeing a UFO. And, you know, he's gaming with his friends. He's like, hey, you guys, I got to go. My mom is seeing a UFO. <laughs> I love and, you know, it. I he ran upstairs with me, and he could see it very clearly. So he ran and got his video camera. We had purchased a video camera for him for his graduation, and he ran to get it. And I videotaped that UFO for two hours. Wow. Two hours that there. And it wasn't until I processed that videotape that I realized there was a second UFO that was also captured on the film that I didn't notice at the time. That one was very different. It was cylindrical in shape. And there was a toroidal energy field around this craft that was moving up and down the fuselage of, of the cylindrical shape of the craft. And uh, so, yeah, it, it was really interesting. You know, after that, we, um, yeah, I didn't know what to think of it. What do you do with that? You know, most people, they take a video, they post it on YouTube. You know, I wasn't on social media and I just kind of kept it to myself. We shared it with a couple of friends and that was about it. And uh, then we, we scheduled a trip to go to Sedona. And uh, it wasn't so much to go there because it's a metaphysical mecca of any kind. Uh, there was just some friends of ours that had been there and they said it was really beautiful. It was a part of the country Rick and I hadn't been to previously. And so we scheduled this trip to go to Sedona. And I went to watch Regina Meredith's show one day and I went on Google just to Google, you know, what was her show going to be about and up came a blog. And in that blog, it said that she was having a gathering in her home in Sedona. And uh, it was for only 10 people and uh, to contact her if you were interested. And I thought, well, that would just be really great to be able to meet her. And uh, so I contacted her and she did have room left. And uh, my husband and I were able to register. And uh, so we went to Sedona. And while we were there, uh, Rick wanted to go UFO viewing. We'd never done that before with the night vision goggles and everything. And uh, so we, we went and saw someone who did that. And we went out on a on an expedition with them and were able to see many craft uh, with the uh, with the night vision equipment. And the woman who runs this said to me afterward, you know, can you come to my office tomorrow? And I thought that was kind of strange, but I'm on vacation. I didn't have anything going on. And I thought, well, yeah, you know, she seemed like a nice person. And she told me she was a psychic. So I had never been to see a psychic. I had never really done anything that most people would consider metaphysical. Uh, I'm just plodding along, reading books. I didn't have a metaphysical community. I didn't know anybody, you know, from these types of communities. I went to her office the next day and she proceeded to tell me that I was a channel. And she told me that uh, she had never in 20 years of doing what she does for a living ever been prompted to tell anybody that or to call someone to her office. Uh, she made it clear that that was an unusual event for her. And, you know, I left there just thinking Sedona's kind of weird. You know, weird people are in Sedona. <laughs> that is one way of putting it. <laughs> yeah. So then we uh, we went hiking. We hired a private guide to take us around to a lot of the wonderful spots in the Sedona area. And um, we wanted to go get a foot massage uh, because we were doing a lot of hiking and our feet and legs were really hurting. And so we went to another business there that uh, in Sedona that has a um, uh, service for massages, this kind of thing. And it turns out the lady who owns it is a psychic. So when we went in there, I saw the sign for that. And I said to Rick, you know, we should see if she has time to do a reading with us. 
He's like, oh, why would you want to do that? I said, you know, we're just, we're on vacation. Let's just do something we wouldn't normally do. And he knew about, you know, he was there for the meeting I had with the lady previously in the week. So we scheduled this and I sat down with her. And the first thing she said to me is, are you aware that you're a channel? And I have to admit, I, I thought that was a little strange being that the other lady had mentioned it and I hadn't told this lady about it. Yep. And um, so she proceeded to talk to me about that and a few other things. And I left there and I looked at Rick and I said, you know, either something's happening here or or this is what they tell tourists in Sedona. <laughs> it's like this mean <laughs> trick they play on people or something. I don't know. So then I went to uh, we just went throughout our week and I was thinking about this, thinking it was a little strange. Ended up at Regina's house over the weekend. And she had a very uh, wonderful young woman that was um, she was associated with that she hired to come in and speak to the 10 of us over the weekend and to give us a private a, a reading in front of everyone else. And I was the last one in the group. And so we were covering past lives that weekend, doing some work with Regina. And this woman was kind of going around the circle telling everyone about their past lives. And she got to me and she smiled real big and she said, you're a channel. And and that was the point at which I started to panic just a little bit. Three, I didn't three really times know, a charm, yeah. Yeah, I didn't really even know what that was. I mean, I understood some of the books I was reading were channeled. I didn't really understand that process. On Regina's show, I had seen her um, interview a woman named Sheila Gillette, and she channels uh, Theo. And so when all of this was done, I, I looked that up, and I eventually enrolled uh, in one of Sheila's courses. And uh, she didn't teach me to channel, but they did teach me about my multidimensionality, and that was very helpful at that point. As we were leaving Phoenix, or as we were leaving Sedona to go back to Phoenix, we're driving down the highway, and I see a glint off to the right, and I turn to my right, and two flying saucers pick up off of the floor of the desert and come in front of us and are flying directly in front of our car. Now, these were about 10 feet in diameter. They were very much the shape of a flying saucer, just exactly what you would think that would be. And one was slightly more in front of the other one. And I just started having a meltdown. I um, uh, yeah. immediately panicked. This is not the same as seeing it in the sky and filming it. This thing is no. 20 feet in front of my car. And how and, was how was Rick? Was Rick well, with you? Rick responded like you would when you're driving, you know, someone, the person next to you hits the air brakes, you know, and, and gasp, and you immediately think you're about to hit something. So, so Rick is, what is it? You know, what is it? And he's looking around and he's driving, and he's looking around and it just took me an instant to realize he didn't see them. Only I could see them. Oh, which immediately caused me to panic. Oh, and I yeah. started to cry. I, um, I actually got a little bit hysterical, to be quite frank with you. I, I did not handle this in a cool, collected fashion. You have to remember, at this point, I don't know anything about any of this. So I begin to tell him what I'm seeing. And much to his credit, he believed me. He's been married to me a long time. He, you know, that's just out of the ordinary for me. So he said, you're seeing them right now. I said, yeah. He said, should I be stopping? I said, you know, they're just keeping pace with the car. I, I think you should just keep driving. And then they just slowly floated off to the left, and then like a shot, they took off. We then got on the plane to come home, and we were flying into the Green Bay Airport. I live in Wisconsin. And uh, as we were coming toward the airport, I looked out the window, and there were two more craft that were flying next to the plane. These ones were somewhat chevron-shaped. They also were not overly large. Um, we're not talking huge, huge ships. Uh, the ones I was seeing up close were relatively small, really smaller than I would think that they would be. And they were kind of a very light gray, white metallic color. And they were just keeping pace with the plane, just lower than the wing. And, and at that you were point, the only I decided, one who saw them? <laughs> I don't know because I decided I'm not telling anybody that I'm seeing these right now. I didn't okay. even tell Rick. Oh, I'm just looking out the window thinking I can't be having a meltdown on this plane. And so I just kind of let that go. And we got to the airport, got our things, we're driving home. And we live about 35 minutes from the Green Bay Airport. And you come off of a highway and our subdivision is, you know, back off the highway a bit. So we're coming down the highway where we have to turn off of it to go into our neighborhood. And there's another one. And this one was huge. This thing had to be, I would say, 80 to 100 feet in circumference. And it was hanging just above the street light at that intersection. I could see the glow of that on my arms. I could see the glow of it on the dash. And again, Rick couldn't see it at all. He couldn't even see the effects of the light of it on me or on the vehicle. This is like... 
a UFO extravaganza kind of experience. Yeah. And I, at that point, I started concluding, you know, they're following me <laughs> for some reason. And again, I don't have a frame of reference for this. So for me, this is freaking me out, you know. So we get home and uh, eventually, you know, we're working with uh, Sheila and Theo uh, through this online course because I knew no one in my area that knew anything about this. So that's why I joined her course, because I didn't know who else to ask. Several weeks went by. I was probably halfway through that course by the time I asked. Uh, and I asked Theo, you know, I do believe in channeling or I wouldn't be in your course. These things are happening to me. I mean, at this point, I'm going out in my backyard and there's four or five of them that light up like a flash bulb and then they take off. Some might be low. If I was to go out there in the middle of the night, I would see them hovering over my neighbor's house. And I mean low in the sky, not like you normally see these in a, in, a, in a picture. And at that point in time, I wasn't doing a lot of filming of them, Nicole, because I was really afraid. This was really scaring me. And I didn't that, know what to normal, do with it. That's a normal, yeah, I, I would, I think, and even anyone who's interested in this or knows something about it would, would be freaked out because it's, it's almost incessant at this point now. It is, it is. And uh, so I finally asked Theo, I said, look, UFOs are following me. <laughs> I didn't even know how to broach the conversation. Oh. <laughs> and, you know, they said to me, you know, that's just happening because they want your attention. And uh, and I said, you know, I was told a lot of things in Sedona that I've been wanting to ask you about. And Theo, Theo just interrupted me and said, it's all real and it's all true. And, you know, that can be your life if that's what you want. And, you know, I ended the, the call. It was kind of a group session. Other people were there for that. Um, and I just sat there at my desk thinking, you know, this is all so incredibly bizarre, but somehow inside I knew that it was real and I knew that it was true. And, um, you know, the UFOs, I still see them. I don't see them at the level that I used to see them, but we do do UFO watching now. I actually do take film video. We bought night vision goggles. I've invested quite a lot of money in making sure that all of that is now documented better than it was in the beginning. Uh, as far as the channeling goes, I literally just sat down on my couch one day when Rick was not at home and said out loud, you know, I don't know who you are. I don't know why you're visiting me in spaceships. Um, but if any of this is true, you're going to have to lead the way on it because I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't, I don't know even what it feels like to channel. I don't know how to make that happen. So, you know, balls in your court is pretty much where I left it. And then I just had this overwhelming urge to speak. It was this pressure coming up from my belly, I think, and up through my chest and into my throat. It almost felt like I was going to throw up. And then out came this voice, very different than my own. And I felt my head get, I call it now, it feels like it's filling with peanut butter. It just kind of gets very dense. It doesn't hurt, but I can feel the frequential connection happening. Um, and then they just began to speak and they introduced themselves and they said, uh, they explained to me what channeling was. They told me that I should record everything that they say, that the best evidence to convince me that it was real would be to go back and listen to those recordings. And for six months, that's all I did uh, with them. I would just sit down to channel and it was just with myself. And for the first three months, I didn't even tell my husband. Uh, and I listened to those recordings and I knew that the things that they were talking about were not things that I knew. You know, you know what you know. You know whether or not you heard something oh, from someone else or read a book yes. about it or saw it mm -hmm. in a movie or a documentary or they were talking to me about things I had never heard ever. What I kind don't of know where what, does anything stand out to you right now? Like that was really, you know, it was mostly it was mostly metaphysical teachings on they don't call it the law of attraction. You know, the collective's teachings around frequency are incredibly in-depth and they are based on physics, not so much, you know, how do you manifest money or how do you manifest a relationship? It's really based around if you're going to be human in this plane of existence, especially right now, you need to understand how this plane of existence operates from a physics standpoint. You'll save yourself a whole lot of frustration with that. And that's really how they approach that whole concept of law of attraction and manifestation. But the way that they do it with people and the way they did it with me was to work with you on what you've already created in your life. You know, let's take a look at this thing that you created, Kelly. Now, what belief do you think was behind that? What do you think you were believing in that moment? What experience had you had that prepared you for that, but also played a role in the frequency you were holding and the beliefs you were holding at the time that created that specific situation in your life? That's how they approach it when they work with other people and when they work with me. 
and they talked to me pretty much about every mistake I ever thought I made. Um, you know, we all have regrets. We all have things. Uh, and at the point at which this was happening to me, you know, it was five years ago. I'm 57 years old now. I was in my early 50s. You work up a few regrets by the time you get into your 50s. And uh, they healed all of that with me, but they didn't do anything special for me. They talked to me. They taught me. And they worked on my beliefs about myself and what I believe to be true about this world and how it came to be, what it is, and how it operates. And so that was a six-month crash course in fixing Kelly Thebo <laughs> <laughs> to prepare me uh, for the role that I would play when I began to channel publicly. Wow. What an and incredible when the, story. Yeah. When the public channeling came online, um, they pretty much said to me, you know, t it's time now to do this in front of other people if you're willing mm -hmm. to do that. And, you know, the collective has never placed a requirement on me. They've never said to me, don't don't read other people's work. Don't listen to other channels. You have to keep your frequency clear. They don't approach anything that way. They're not here to limit my life. They're here to enhance it. I, and, I uh, like that. I really like that because yeah. I've seen where other channels will do otherwise. And I've always felt that we are here to experience all of this. You know, mm -hmm. and I, I mean, maybe this is just the part of me that really en enjoys wine <laughs> or really enjoys <laughs> chocolate. I go, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to give up my wine because it may lower my frequency. You know, like, I, I'm yep. here to just enjoy it and be human. And because there's going to be a time where I won't be able to do that. Yeah. And, you know, we're here to have community with one another. We are intricately connected from a physics perspective to one another and also from the perspective of just being human, our human perspective that we're all sharing right now. Uh, the collective's message is a message of freedom. What you believe about your wine, what you believe about your chocolate determines your frequency, not the wine and the chocolate in and of itself. And the same can be said of our relationships with other people and the circumstances we find ourselves in today all over our planet. Uh, you know, they have a really unique way of teaching you ultimate freedom as a divine being while also teaching you that the beliefs you have about yourself are going to determine what you create and you need to be careful what you believe. Mm, very careful. And this kind of brings back mm. to one of the things that I really learned when I was in this last stage of my awakening, which has been the most intense, uh, which started in 2016, um, was that it, it, this idea around you can't see it to believe it. You need to believe it to see it. And I mm -hmm. understand it now more from just listening to you talk. It's the, the, the importance of our belief structures on a whole from allowing us to live whatever it is that we're truly desiring to manifest. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is the most challenging part of working with the collective because they won't tell you what to believe. I get people who contact us for private session all the time who ask questions like, what is my life's purpose? And the collective will say to them, you know, what do you want it to be? What do you feel drawn to? You know, you all had an intent when you came here. Yes, we're all here at this time specifically for a reason. I, I do believe that. But your freedom, nothing, even your own intentions before you come, do not supersede your freedom to live your life and your existence, not only here on earth, but anywhere. And that, that part of the teaching of the collective people find very challenging because it puts the ball right back in their court to be responsible enough to examine their lives and be honest with themselves whether yes. or not they're happy with what they've created. Yes. And I mean, you know? we're, we're definitely going to dive into that when we get into the channel. But it's yeah. this whole concept of both we're, we're, we're dealing with very kind of two different situations right now where there are people who want to um take the the jab to you know feel safe and then there's people who don't want to take it to feel safe mm -hmm. and it's you know this idea of um there's oh gosh where was i just going with that it just slipped my mind but it's this idea of how much power we give away to something outside of us. And yes. of course, you know, this isn't to take away from anyone who's making a choice for themselves. It's your choice. It's your freedom. It's your sovereignty. You get to choose whatever you want. But the bigger thing is when we get into that belief structure is 
What is your belief structure behind that choice? Is it actually out of fear? Is it limiting you? Is Mm -hmm. it putting more power into something outside of you again? Because that is why we are all here in the situation to begin with. Mm -hmm. And if we don't start having... Yeah, Yeah, that lines up with what the collective teaches. You know, they say control structures exist because you sought to control one another. First, there has to be a frequency to support that before it can come into... Uh, materiality at the level at which it has manifested. And, and, and you know, I, a lot of people don't want to hear that. They, they I, don't I want know. to hear that we've been complicit with, I know. with control structures. But the collective is not... The unique thing about them is they don't teach blame. And to be honest with you, they also don't teach morality. Uh, they don't necessarily have a problem with our morals. They consider that our choice. But what they're trying to explain to people is frequency is not a matter of blame. It's a matter of understanding how did you create that? Why would you have created that? And what were you believing in that moment that led to a frequency that made it possible? So when people come to them for healing and they come to them to work with them, you know, the first thing the collective has to do is deprogram them (laughs) around these belief systems that the universe is delivering something to you and you don't know how it's coming. Uh, they really teach personal responsibility, not as a rub your nose in it, but as a, do you have any idea how powerful you are? Uh, that's the, the, the angle that they take on that, Mm -hmm. that if you created this, you can create something else. What you created matters less than how you did it. Mm -hmm. Understanding the principles behind that and that we have a choice about holding beliefs that serve us and that serve others or holding beliefs that don't. Lots of times we act like we aren't in charge of what we believe. We are absolutely in charge of what we believe about mm-hmm. everything. Absolutely. And, and you know, I think that's where people get mixed up because even, even the spiritual teachings that have been real predominant, not just standard religions, but, uh, you know, metaphysical, spiritual belief systems, and there's a variety of them, kind of teach this giving yourself up to the universe thing. And the collective teaches that we're an aspect of source. Source decided to have an experience of itself, uh, dispersed its own energy in such a way as to create all of you, all of us, and every other form of consciousness. Mm -hmm. You are source, you're already source. This is not a spiritual thing you need to obtain. It is who you are. And the key to living here, from the collective's perspective and mine as well now, is understanding what power and choice that gives you and exercising it. Many people, we just hesitate to act upon the thing that's most important to us or the belief that we really do hold as a central belief because we're not acting on it, because we're not voicing it. We're keeping it in the background and putting ourselves in subjection to these other beliefs that don't serve us. That's really their teaching in a nutshell. And what they do with individuals is get to the bottom of your individual beliefs, Mm -hmm. which all boil down to every belief you have is a belief about yourself. Uh, how we are, how we are in the world, how we witness our world, how our world interacts with us. It's all central to us Yeah, because we are individually source and we are collectively source. We're all part of the one mind of source. And when you look at it from that perspective, it changes your whole mindset around what you're capable of doing. It's incredibly empowering, incredibly empowering. Yeah. And that's the main reason I agreed to be their channel. You know, in the beginning, I was real... I said to them, you know, you ever channel anything I can't get behind? I'm all done with this. <laughs> Here I am lecturing them. Mm-mm-mm, here's right? my ultimatums. Here's yes. my conditions. Here's Kelly's rule book, right? <laughs> but, you know, it didn't take me very long to realize that they come at this with so much intelligence. They really, they speak to your intelligence. Mm. Reason with you, not, not just to get you all souped up spiritually. Yeah. And, you know, people get people do have a spiritual reaction to them and you have a frequential reaction to them that can be quite profound. They are a frequency just as we are. Um, But, you know, the angle that they take on it is just they talk with you. They don't try to exploit your emotions. They don't, you know, get you all souped up about um, moral issues. You know, Mm -hmm. that's a big thing right now. Right. On the earth plane. Oh, yeah. You know, they really try to come at it from a perspective of. If you really are divine, then this is how we should be able to speak to you. And this is how you could be understanding yourself to have a better experience. You know, and you and I are very much on the same page with this. Mm, We Uh, are. When you asked me to come on the podcast and we visited for a little bit, I hung up so excited, Nicole, that a young person like you is out there shining your light and, uh, and, and not being positive around 
positive thinking, you know, the, the power of positive thinking, you're really looking at it from this perspective of, we need to take our power back here. <laughs> this is out of balance, this experience we're having. And, and I have been so impressed with that, um, <sighs> with the contribution that you're making. So thank you for that. Well, I appreciate those words. They're very kind. And I and thanks. So thank you very much. You know, this has been the very dominant message that I've been getting all year through my own um, guidance is that the controls, all the control, what we're watching are all the control structures are crumbling. They're falling apart Mm -hmm. and because they don't work well with the higher frequencies that are coming through to this planet and what we're as we know individuals doing like bring the own frequency that we're creating. Um, and we're moving into structures of surrender. And that mm-hmm. to me is like the biggest all encompassing theme here. And I know it's a very difficult concept for some people to truly understand the power behind surrender. Um, and But if there is any part of you that is trying to control anyone or anything outside of you, then you are complicit in the control structure being manifested. Exactly. And until- And until we start to understand that and allow ourselves to move into complete surrender, which is absolute trust, absolute trust in alignment with source energy and who you are as a divine being and and honor your experience fully so that you can honor everyone else's experience through this act of surrender. I don't see how we get out of this (laughs) situation Mm -hmm. because we can't manifest it until we get to that level. Exactly. It's a belief system. It's a belief system. Everything is a belief system for the human experience. This is the perception that we're having. And, you know, inside of human bodies, we are working with a more limited perspective. It's not a lower perspective. You know, the human experience is not lower than what you are when you're not human. You know, I, I really don't look at it that way. It's just frequency. We're having this third dimensional experience. Fifth dimensional energies are here now. That transition is definitely going to happen. And, and you cannot take third dimensional baggage into a fifth dimensional experience. It, it just, the, frequentially, these two things do not meet. They don't meet. No, they don't. Uh, so there has to be a reconciliation of releasing all of that. Mm-hmm. And that's the surrendering. You would say surrendering, the word that, that I would use is releasing. Mm-hmm. Understanding you are not the sum total of everything you've ever created, your source. Mm-hmm. And what you have created has been the physical manifestation of a belief system that you held, generated a frequency from, and formulated an existence within that frequency. We're all incredibly unique in our ability to manifest, to create in our lives what we want, and we're always contributing that frequency to the collective consciousness as well, but we're not in subjugation to that. I think many people have that backwards, Nicole, where they think that they're in subjugation to this collective consciousness, and the being an individual is just this kind of, this kind of human perception. I don't really believe that. I believe that as divine beings, we are individual and we are collective. We are the mind of source. And in the human experience, your individual belief systems will manifest a personal reality that then will become a part of and go into resonance with, maybe or maybe not, the collective reality that we're creating together. It's all happening at one time. Mm -hmm. But this thought process that we're in subjugation to our society, our government, you know, um, money, the economy, your, even your family, your friends, uh, all of that. It's, it's a belief system that doesn't serve us. And we have the freedom to believe whatever we want to believe. That's the part that people really struggle with. So you're saying that if I wanted to believe that I'm not in subjugation to my family, that I could just believe that. And I tell them, yes, you, you can believe that because you're choosing the belief you're already believing, right? You behave in subjugation to your family or Ooh, other people. People don't that's like that. Oh. People don't like that. They don't because it's <laughs> personal responsibility. But the thing that's beautiful, I would like to think about the contribution that I'm making with the collective is they are so loving and so compassionate. And unlike, unlike even me as a human, they're really able to convey these concepts to people in a way where there isn't any judgment. The judgment is coming from us. We judge ourselves, we judge one another, we seek to control, and that's how we got into this in the first place. But it isn't really who we are as divine beings. But because that's been our experience, you know, stop and think about it. You have a belief, it generates a frequency, and then you manifest a physical reality. 
Well, what's going to happen when you do that? It's going to reinforce the belief. That's what's going to happen. And that's why people mm -hmm. have a hard time releasing those beliefs because they do have evidence in their lives of that belief being reinforced. Mm -hmm. That is you being a creator. You're creating exactly what you believe, but it's not meant to trap you. It's meant to set you free. Uh, it's just a matter of believing something else. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not just saying go out there nilly willy and believe anything. I'm saying stop and think about what you really believe about yourself, yeah. about the circumstances that you've already created and begin to examine that in a new way so you can transform that belief into something that will serve you and will serve others in the long run so we can create the world that we want to live in. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. I love it. And guys, I mean, this is like. I mean, I just feel like we're speaking the same language. It's just, it's Absolutely. so, you know, it's so easy here. And I know to my audience, I keep hammering at home about the control structures. You got to give up all the control. Like you're, when I say give up control, I mean, stop trying to control <clears throat> things outside of you. Just let them be what they are. And you work on what it is that you want your power to have, mm -hmm. um, to be in place of and what you believe, what you want to create, because it's and, and, I'll, and I'll keep saying it because I know that on some level people are getting it. I know people are. And mm -hmm. I know that there are some people who are still struggling with it. And that's OK, because it's you know, it's working through. There's a process here. But every time I say it or someone else says it like you or, or anyone else, it starts to integrate a little bit deeper and certain things start to unlock. It's like it unlocks another la layer it unlocks another level of understanding. And mm -hmm. you start to have like these ahas around certain aspects of your life and how certain beliefs are controlling, you know, what you're able to experience. So it's, I, I think it's just, it's one of those messages where I probably won't stop saying it. And I'm sorry to anyone in my audience who's just like, ah, I've heard it so many times, but it's so <laughs> important. It's so, it's one of those things where it's like, you can't get around it. This is just where we're going. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I agree. Um, I agree. Okay. Well, oh, this is this is I mean, we could we could keep talking for hours, um, but I know that we're going to get into the channeling with um, the collective uh, very momentarily. Is there anything that you wanted to say before you go into the channel um, to the audience, like as your own personal message or anything that, you know, any wisdom or insights you've gleaned a along your own journey so far? Because I know you're going to be tired after we come out of channel. Yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> I am. I am a little bit spacey when I come out. I, I tend to limit my comments a little bit when I'm done channeling. Yeah. Um, it just takes me a little while to come back to myself. I guess the thing that I would want your listeners to know uh, is you're so much more than you believe that you are. And I'm not talking about a spiritual thing. I'm talking about your energy with consciousness. Your energy is literally holding together the entire existence that you're currently witnessing, along with my energy, along with Nicole's energy. We're doing that collectively. And unless we all can come together at a higher frequency, and I don't mean higher, higher, I mean a different frequency that causes a change in our thinking, a change in uh, who we are as people at a consciousness level. You know, the collective teaches that fifth dimensional energies, they change you at the molecular level. They also cause you to be more intelligent. They change, they change you physically. It's not just a belief system. There is a real physical phenomenon happening on this planet right now. And you're seeing it play out the way that you are because third dimensional principles and control structures can't go into a fifth dimensional experience. They have to be released. They're not just going to go away. They have to be released. And that is done through the belief systems of each individual who's participating in that collective consciousness, which is all of us. And that begins in our personal lives. You know, to transform your life, you don't have to wake up tomorrow and suddenly believe all of these things that you don't even understand that someone else is telling you is an important belief. But what you do need to do is to begin to examine what you have created and ask yourself, is that really what I wanted? And if I could still have what I want, what would it be? Would I want my life to be more peaceful? Would I want, you know, I'll give you an example, Nicole. You know, I have all kinds of people contacting me right now for private sessions to ask the collective some, some really heartbreaking questions. This is the hardest part of being a channel is, is people come to you and they talk about the things that hurt them the most. And that's hard to hear sometimes. Uh, that part of it, I, I try not to carry it into my personal experience, but I care about people. And there's a lot of hurting people out there and I don't want to minimize that for anyone. 
I had someone recently who booked a session and they had lost their job because of the mandates. And they said to the collective, you know, what am I going to do? You know, tell me where there would be another job. Can you tell me where I should move that I would be able to get a job? And, you know, they worked in the healthcare industry. And the collective didn't get into any of that. They said to them, what we really want you to realize is the job that you already had. You're the one who created it. So let's first talk about that. And this woman left that session clearly understanding whether she wanted to embrace it and put it into actuality in her life or not. She clearly understood all I have to do right now is to do the same thing I've already done. I created a way to make a living. I created the experience I wanted to have. I went for the interview at the very company where I wanted to work. A lot of people don't understand you're creating your life. Other people aren't cutting you some slack and hiring you in these jobs. They hired you because you were a match in frequency and it was what you wanted. You created it. It's your life. And you can do it again and again and again, as many times as you need to in as many areas of your life as you can think of to transform this experience that you're having. By understanding you're already powerful and all of you already have evidence of that. If any of you have a roof over your head, food in your belly, and money in the bank, you're, al you're already manifesting something that's serving you. If you have anyone in your life that you love, that you love being with, you've already manifested relationships that serve you. We need to do more of what, of what we want and of what serves us and less of what we don't. And we need to quit viewing these situations that we find ourselves in because we are a collective consciousness as something <clears throat> that is directing your life and taking it over. You're still in charge of your life and you're still the one manifesting it. We just have to examine the beliefs behind all of that. That would be my message because that is the crux. That is the foundation of the teachings of the collective. That is, that is wonderful. I, I love that. I think that that is sage advice for anyone. You know, anyone can take that advice and, uh, really do something powerful with themselves. It's a very empowering message. So thank you so much. Yeah. I I yeah. know my audience is loving you right now. I know they are. Um, <laughs> I, I know hope they're so. just we so, love them. <laughs> yeah, well, they're just soaking it up. So let's get you prepared to go into channel so that we can bring the collective through. Very excited to um, speak with them. And okay. while you prepare, I'm just going to let the audience know for those of you who are watching on YouTube or perhaps listening live later, on iTunes or Spotify, there may be some brief moments here of silence while Kelly gets into her state of channel. Yes, Kelly, we are here. We're appreciative of the opportunity to be with you today. Do you have questions? Yes, thank you very much. Um, I guess the first question that I think would be very helpful to the audience uh, right now is, you know, we've talked just prior about the importance of belief systems. Uh, from your perspective, what are the belief systems that are most prominent being held in individuals on either side of the polarity of the issues that we're um, experiencing today that are holding uh, people back from experiencing uh, more unity and uh, less oppression, <laughs> we'll say. Well, that would be the belief that other people can affect your life the belief that somehow you are in subjugation to the other person and the other person can be anyone can be one person can be your family can be a societal structure can be your entire civilization you fear one another you are traumatized people this is the truth what you are going through what you are seeing is yourselves working through your trauma and by trauma we mean fear you know you hold a belief just as our channel has said, and you generate a frequency. Then you go out and you have an experience and it reinforces that belief. And that's why you cling to your beliefs the way that you do. Every belief that you have is a belief about yourself. And the reason that we say that is you're always viewing your world and it is appropriate in accordance with how you fit into it. The experience you're having within it, the perception you're having of self as human and also as divine. 
within the context of the whole of the mind of source, which for you in your human experience is the whole of your human civilization, this experience that you're having upon planet Earth, as you would call it, this plane of existence that is right now going through a transformation. You know, if you take any, any situation of polarity, one of the reasons ones uh, get all worked up and are functioning at a lower frequency around all of it is that it's not enough for you to exercise your choice. You want everyone else to exercise your choice as well. You don't want them to be exercising their own choices and creating their own reality. And the reason that you feel that way is you're actually believing that whatever they're doing is touching you. And you see, this is what your control structures are masters at. They're masters at pitting you against one another. It is the ones who have partaken of these substances and the ones who have not, yes? And if it isn't that, it is the color of your skin. And if it isn't that, it is your economic differences. And if it isn't that, it is your language or your geographic location upon the planet. It is wealth or poverty. It is constant polarity. It is a message that is broadcast to you in every form, not just from control structures, but from one another within the smallest and the largest of communities, within your own families even. That in order for you to be safe, everyone has to be just like you. And when you stop and think about that, the ones who dwell within these alternative belief system uh, communities, the metaphysical ones, as you would say, for lack of another word to refer to them, you're no different. You're no different. We have ones who come to us and they say to us, well, how can I get my mother to treat me better? Well, that is not what is at hand. What is at hand with the mother is you don't want to give her license to just be who she is. Because that reflects back to you that she uh, perhaps does not have resonance with you. Resonance is frequency. It is the way that you relate one to the other. To a very great extent, it is a physics principle, is what it is. It's based on beliefs. It's not based on love. We have many to say to us, collective, what is love? Love is a frequency that is the absence of fear, is how we define love. It is when you can look at another and see them as a divine being, not as a spiritual concept, but understanding energetically this is what they are. They are source, just as you are. And they must be free to make their own decisions, just as you must be free. For if their freedom is limited, so is yours. So is your creative ability. However you want to restrict another, you are restricting yourself. And by holding that belief, you know, how do you create when you're not human? You create with thought. How did source create you with thought? Your beliefs are creations. What you see within this plane of existence is the physical manifestation of a frequency of a belief. You focus on the situations with one another instead of the belief and the frequency that preceded that situation, that was the impetus for that situation. And not understanding this principle is what leads you to believe that by focusing on your own behavior and others' behavior and a moral code of some kind, that you're somehow going to be able to solve your personal problems and the problems of your world. And we're telling you from a physics perspective that's not how it works. You understand? Oh, yes. I had a very similar experience with my father where after <laughs> years and years of being so annoyed with how he was, I started to learn to just let him be him. And he soon was very accepting of me. And uh, I very much see the power behind that message. So thank you. You're welcome. Um, you know, speaking of um, division, could you please go into greater detail around how morality is uh, further creating more division here on the planet? This is a complicated teaching, and it is a teaching that is not only difficult to understand, but difficult to embrace. And the reason for that is because of your religious programming. You know, there are many of you who would say, well, I'm not religiously programmed. I've, I've never set foot in one of these institutions for this standardized religion. You have beliefs within your societies that are religious beliefs, and morality is one of them. Now, we'll begin our teaching by telling you what we're not teaching. Are we teaching that you should live in a world where everyone should just be able to do whatever they want to do? 
We're telling you, you already live in a world where everyone's already doing what they want to do. You already have that. We're not asking you to create it. It already exists. You have laws and laws and more laws. And you have ones who are breaking the laws. So do laws in and of themselves, morality in and of itself, stop anyone from doing anything? No. So what we would say is we would redefine morality. Morality is when a certain amount of people decide on one behavior that's acceptable and anyone who doesn't do that behavior is going to suffer the consequences because that's really what morality is. You cannot affect change in another human being, period. You are each divine, individual, divine beings. You are an aspect of source. You are not a child of God. You are an aspect of source. Think of it as the hologram. If you were to look at a hologram of a flower, you would see that every piece of the hologram that makes up the hologram is in fact an entire flower. Go upon your technology and to look up the technology around a hologram and you will understand exactly what we are saying in this moment. Each of you are fully source. You're not a small aspect of, a lesser version of, less powerful than some uh, chip off the old block, yes, as you would say. This is not what you are. You are source itself. Source is having an experience of itself through you. And you are all part of, and so are we, the one mind of source. And as such, frequently, what we believe and the frequency we emit in any form that we take, and believe us when we say you're taking very many forms than just the human form in this moment, uh, is going to culminate in something that at certain frequencies, whoever shares a given frequency is going to have a like experience. That's how it works. It's a physics principle. Now, that being said, <clears throat> religions in and of themselves, we do not speak against religion. There's nothing wrong with understanding that there is a, what you would consider a higher power. Uh, source is real. So you are created beings. You are source itself. You've not been created to be separate from or a piece of. And because of that, anywhere that you dwell, who you are as source must be respected by the physics principles that rule that plane of existence. If you could come into this dimension, into this experience uh, that you are having, the perception you are having of being human upon the earth plane, and, and from that, have all of your choice as source to be taken from you, well, you would cease to be source, would you not? That's not possible. You're either divine or you're not. You're either source or you're not, which means you are unlimited no matter where you can dwell. So m morality, the whole argument of morality begins to break down very rapidly, does it not? Because it is predicated on the belief that you can influence others, you can force others, you can cajole others, and you can punish others into being or believing or doing something that you find far superior to what they would have come up with on their own. And when we phrase it that way, uh, really puts a different color on morality, doesn't it? Morality is a frequency. It's a belief system. It is not in and of itself uh, an energy necessarily. Many of you have this belief, whether you have ever been religious, uh, as you think of it or not, that source has a moral code, that source is far off somewhere biting its fingernails over what the crazy humans are creating upon the earth plane. If source was doing that, source would not be source. Source is all of you and all of us. It knows exactly what's afoot and it is not afraid. Has given you complete freedom to create anything you want to create and to learn through that what serves you best. So we give you an example. You know, you have laws, you have rules. Can't have people running around the earth plane murdering other people. We do understand this. We don't have an issue with you putting people in prison or whatever you need to do. You're going to decide on that collectively. It's your choice. The fact you have a choice is what is important to us. When you choose to take these ones, let us say all that is going on upon the earth plane someday, a day is going to come. There are many speaking. Oh, everyone's going to be held accountable, yes. And there's going to be this and, and this type of trial and that kind of thing. And there's going to be a facility, a special facility off on an island where all of them are going to go live, yes, and all of this. 
And do you think when you put all of them there that their frequency upon the earth plane somehow is ended? Do you think their frequency and their power as divine beings uh, is limited to the concrete blocks that you would put them behind? Again, morality is flawed thinking. We're not saying there is not value in agreeing on what you're going to do as a society or even in creating circumstances for ones who will not comply. We're saying just don't, don't believe then that you're actually solving the underlying problem. The underlying problem is your consciousness, not morality. If all of you were functioning at a consciousness where you understood that you really are creating your own reality and it's just your cooperation with these control structures that causes them to exist, you would cease to do so if you really believe that. And when you cease to do so, you would see the evidence of your own creations in your own lives and you would cease to be afraid of one another. If you were not afraid of one another, what would you create? You wouldn't go to create something and say, well, you know, Mary over there, Mary has already created that. I can't do it. I have to do something different than Mary in order for my contribution to matter. You would not even believe that because you would understand your contribution is not at all Mary's contribution. It's yours. It's whatever you create it to be because you are a unique divine being who is part of the mind of source along with everyone else. And that there is room for source energy to exist as you having a perception of itself as human and to have complete freedom to have whatever experience you want to have. You're assuming you're not going to get along when you do that because you cannot envision a life where you do not judge one another and do not fear one another. That is born of morality. We have many who say to us, Collective, why do you not speak of forgiveness? We don't speak of forgiveness because it's predicated on judgment. You have done something to hurt me. I have judged that to be hurtful. Our society has judged that to be wrong. You now owe me an apology. And I will be very magnanimous. And I will work myself up to a frequency where I am able to bestow my good graces upon you again, even though you are undeserving of it. That sounds like religion, doesn't it? Does that sound like a divine being who understands that they are completely powerful and autonomous and able to create whatever experience they want to create? It doesn't matter that you're having a limited perce perception right now as human. You can create anything within this plane of existence that you can envision, that you can really believe that is possible. You're not limited in any way by your perceptions as human. You adopt beliefs as human that limit you. And morality is one of them. To really look at others as being divine and to understand, you know, you may make a choice today that I don't like, that on the surface appears to be hurtful to all of us. But I understand that you're a divine being having your own experience and that that behavior is born of a belief that you are free to hold as a divine being. When you come into a physical plane of existence, you have to figure out how you're going to do that with one another and allow as much freedom as you possibly can while still creating an existence where all of you are able to reach your potential as human. This is what you are creating and you are creating it in every moment. You've been seeking to create it, all of you, from the inception of this plane of existence and your participation within it. For that is the reason you are here. If all of you want to know your purpose, we just gave it to you. You understand? Oh, very much. Um, that's very interesting how you framed the this idea of morality and limiting someone's frequency being behind concrete walls and how that's not the case because this was a message I received um, in early 2020 when things started to happen that there was perhaps a, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Not misperception, but underestimation of what is possible uh, that those of us who may be confined to having to stay at home because we were all ordered to stay at home, that we wouldn't be able to still continue doing our work. And that that was not the case at all. We could just continue to still do the work that we wanted to, to continue creating. Uh, it doesn't matter where we are, what walls we're behind or not behind. And so I totally understand that. I think that was a very valuable um, frame of reference that you provided us, so thank you with when it comes to the uniqueness of being human how does that differ in a way of allowing 
people to understand here what they're truly capable of um, versus other beings, because there seems to be this, uh, again, giving of power away to what other beings can do and not focusing on what one is capable of in this human body. Could you perhaps uh, share with uh, us what what sort of uniqueness and abilities uh, we are able to do that is different than other beings that we wouldn't be aware of at this time? Mm. We wouldn't really phrase it that way. What we would say is you are source. And your creative ability is not limited in any plane of existence within which you dwell. The only difference in those planes of existence is the perception you're having of yourself and the beliefs that are born of it. You know, we give you an example. Mm. We have money who come to us and they to ask us, well, collective, what about the Galactic Federation? Yes, what about these other civilizations that supposedly are interacting with the Earth plane? Why are they not intervening with the circumstances upon the earth plane? Are they here to be benevolent? Are there ones who aren't benevolent? All of this. Uh, you know, there are ones delivering messages that these uh, political structures, because that's what they are, uh, of these other civilizations are somehow intervening on behalf of the human race with the, with the human race not being aware of it, this type of thing. What we're going to say to you is that it's not that they're capable of things you're not capable of, it's that they dwell at a certain frequency by choice. So the first thing we're going to tell you is we do not teach that at any point in time, any event is going to happen that is going to magically change you into a higher frequency being, period. You choose your frequency with every thought that enters your mind, with everything you participate in, with every perception you choose. And you do choose your perceptions. Why was our channel able to see the UFOs and the husband was not? Because she functions at a different frequency. The ones in those spaceships tapped into that frequency to make themselves visible to her. It's frequential. And much of it is based on technology. Where the spaceships are concerned, it's not even really a matter of consciousness as much as it's a matter of technology. But it's frequential because everything is frequency. And when we say this, we mean it quite literally. So what is the human capable of? Is the human special in any way? We would not use the word special. We would say you are unlimited. And to move from a frequency that does not serve you, helps you to hang on to, reinforces beliefs that don't serve you and keeps you creating the same thing again and again and again, you have to adopt a new belief about yourself. Why are some able to do remote viewing? Why are some psychics? Why does our channel channel and not everyone seems to be able to channel? What we would say to you is it's a choice. It's a frequency. It is not that the human being is limited in any way. You're not. But you are living within a certain frequency in this plane of existence. That frequency is now transforming. Could you go from a third dimensional frequency to a 10th dimensional frequency overnight. Yes, there's nothing stopping you from doing that, but it isn't likely to happen because you hold the beliefs that you do around being human. There is a difference between is it possible and can you do it? All things are possible and not as miracles, but as frequency. You are energetic beings. You are energy with consciousness, pure source energy. You are unlimited. And we will continue to tell you that. These beings who seem to be of a higher frequency than you, capable of things that you are not capable of, it isn't that you're not capable, it's that you don't believe that you are capable. It's that no one is delivering the message to you that now is the time to release every belief that's holding you down and begin to embrace the ones that will move you forward. This is not a mantra upon the earth plane. There are many mantras upon the earth plane. This is not one of them. It's a minority of you who are teaching this now. One day it will be a majority of you. And you will begin to see the frequency shift. And you will create something different based upon the beliefs you're holding about yourselves. For everything is frequency. Are you in subjugation to the frequency of the earth plane? You're functioning within it. At the point at which you released yourself from it completely, you wouldn't be in the third dimension anymore. 
that would no longer be your perception. You wouldn't be able to see. Hmm. You would be able to see, perhaps, if you chose. Many do not. Uh, the lower frequencies below you. They're not really below you. They're just different. All space. Think of it as space. All space and time is dwelling within the same physical space. One of the first things we taught our channel is that other dimensions are just a breath away. And we would hold, hold her hand to her face as this. That there are whole existences happening literally right in front of your face. What stops you from seeing them? The frequency you're dwelling at. The beliefs you're having. Why do some people see the ghost and others do not? Why do some see the ETs and others do not? It is not that you are more enlightened or all of this. It is just frequential. It is a physics principle. It has to do with your belief systems. Now, what makes human unique? Yes, you are having a perception. You have chosen to travel within the physical bodies that you're traveling within. There's a certain perception that goes with that. You have a brain. Why do you have a brain? Well, you have a brain because you need to navigate the physical body within a physical plane of existence. It is, in some ways, it's an imperfect, imperfect explanation, but in some ways, it is the connection to the manifestation of, in a physical way, the mind of source itself. When we go to do the channeling, what are we doing with our channel? We're making a frequential connection. We're not entering her body. She is not possessed. She can come out of channel anytime she wants to. We do not just come popping in. We can communicate with her in the mind. We would not call it telepathy. It's a frequential connection and information is able then to be transmitted. No different than the technologies that you have today, really, in that it is frequency. So this being said, the human is not limited. The human limits themselves through the perceptions they choose to embrace. And the biggest b belief that you have that stands in the way of recognizing your own potential is looking for evidence of it before you've believed it. Just as uh, you were saying, the one who is talking to us now was making this observation. Was she not uh, before we have come to you? Yes, about needing to believe it before you see it. Yes, and you know, your religions would call this faith. We do not use this word. We seek to teach you who and what you are, give you evidence of that encourage you to release those things that are holding you down so there's room in your mind and your frequency and your experience to begin to experience something new where you can draw these types of experiences to self as evidence of your multidimensionality, but not as an escape plan you know there are many uh well you know you need to have out of body experiences that's where it's really at yes you need to be out of the body well why to come to the body if you want to be out of the body all the time you see and we seek to teach in a way where you can have these multidimensional experiences and understand them, understand that they are evidence of who you are already. They are not evidence of uh, some ascension process that you are, you are grasping at. You are already a source. You cannot go higher than that. You're just having a perception. And if it's limited, you're the one limiting it with your beliefs. To expect the human to give up all evidence of every belief they've ever held because they created that belief and they created that evidence and to embrace something new for the sole reason that that is what they want. That is what we're here to teach. Do you know how many of you come to us and we say to you, well, what do you want? And as our channel would say, there's crickets. Yes, there is the chirping of the insects waiting for the answer because you do not know what you want. Most of you know what you don't want, and that's a good start. There's nothing wrong with that. But really envisioning, I need to create what my life will be. What do I want? And do I believe that if I need to get a new job tomorrow that I'm capable of doing that? Am I going to sit down with a high frequency and say, well, of course I can create this job. I created the other job, yes. I'm going to sit down and ask myself, what do I really want to be doing? Maybe I've been in a job I really didn't enjoy. I'm just afraid of the money construct. In being without the job, set that aside. What do I want to do? Who am I? What do I want? What makes me happy? Most of you cannot even answer these basic questions. Because you've spent so much time in drama, so much time seeking to control one another, so much time in fear, that you've never even given any thought to your own happiness. 
to your own aspirations of what kind of a world you actually want to be living in. And many of you, when you think about that, you immediately begin to disparage those that you see as standing in your way of having it. No one is standing in your way. Each of you creates a frequency and you offer this to the world and that is happening whether you like it or not. You're a frequential being. Your frequency is being shared with the whole of the human race 24-7. And all of you, you sense these frequencies, you know these frequencies as divine beings and you go into resonance with whatever belief lines up with your belief. Whatever frequency lines up with your frequency. This is called resonance. When two frequencies come together, they create amplitude. Amplitude means it's now a more powerful frequency. Think of it as volume. And then something comes into materiality. This is how this works. It is not a matter of human is limited. It is a matter of human doesn't know what human wants. And human needs to release fear before answering that question can even become possible. You understand? Oh, yes, very much so. That's wonderful information. Um, I'm very curious to ask you right now, uh, because I'm a very visual person, and I know other people tend to be more visual as one of their strengths that they're aware of, in understanding concepts, could you explain to us from the belief structure and how our beliefs um, are either holding us back or moving us forward in a limitless uh, way, how that is expressed through our DNA. Um, just because I've studied a lot of anatomy and when I see things kind of happening on a uh, microcosm, such as like our body, cells, DNA, it helps me understand things. So I'm wondering if there's a way that you can understand it from that visual perspective that would help us understand the belief structure further. Yes. We need to predicate this teaching with some information. You are a seated race. You are a seated people. All forms of materiality really are. What we mean by that is its frequency. Did other civilizations visit the earth plane and manipulate the genetics of the earth plane? Yes. Was that done as a nefarious plan? Not necessarily, no. Can it be used in a nefarious way? Of course, all things can, yes. It just it has to do with the frequency you're dwelling at when you're using uh, the knowledge of how to do this and the technology behind it uh, in the planes of existence where technology would be used for it. You're not all the same. And you are very much different from one another in ways you do not even understand. So to predicate the teaching, we will say to you as an example, why do some avail themselves of these substances and they die? And others avail themselves of these substances and they live? Well, because you're not all the same. Not only are you not all be given, being given the same substances because you're not, you're not all the same. The frequency you dwell at, and we're not just talking now about your belief systems, we're talking about frequency. You have to remember in the midst of this teaching that you are the one mind of source. You are never disconnected from the collective consciousness of source or any other microcosm of that collective consciousness ever. And your DNA is a picture of this. We had one to come to us who was a person of color, as you would say. And she said to us, collective, Am I impacted by my people having been slaves? Have I, is it in my DNA? There are some things that I struggle with and I don't want to believe these things about the human race. I want to rise above it. But I have a hard time releasing those beliefs. Is it because of the color of my skin, because of the DNA that I hold in common with these other ones? And we had to tell her, cells hold memory. Everything is frequency, everything. Every cell in your body, every organ in your body, your brain itself, you as a divine being, even when you are not human, everything is frequency. It's information is what it is. Again, we do not focus on the spiritual aspect of the human. That's already a given. We don't have a need to discuss it. Your source, that's all we really say about that. 
we want you to understand the physics behind all of this. What does it mean to be SARS? It means to be energy. To function at a variety of frequencies within your world, within your bodies. You see? Your bodies are frequential. They're energy. And they carry information. So do are your belief systems influenced by your DNA? Yes. They're meant to be. What is the DNA? It is the physical representation of a belief and a frequency. All physical matter is. All of it. You live within a certain frequency upon the earth plane, and that frequency intersects the human body in a certain way. Right now, many of you, uh, you look around your world and you see everyone in chaos. What is happening is that you have two frequencies interacting in the human body and in the psyche of the human, in the understanding of the human of themselves and all the beliefs that they hold, and in the physical representation of the physical body of the human in relation to the genuine frequential energy that is existing right now in this particular plane of existence. That's a lot of frequency coming your way for you to process. It's a lot of information. Many of you, uh, you have a spiritual awakening is what you call it. That's even what our channel calls it, for lack of a better word. It was an awakening uh, to the divine aspect of self, to the fact that she has energy with consciousness, that her consciousness exists outside of the physical representation of her body. The once she began to understand that, all things became possible then. And the belief systems that she was holding that were based on just the physical experiences that she had had and the information she gleaned from those experiences, which she thought was what formed her beliefs when it was the belief itself that formed the experience. She had that backwards, as many of you do. The one she began to understand that those beliefs could be released because she is energy with consciousness and she is not in subjugation even to her own experiences. Other aspects of her DNA were awakened. Inside of each of you as a seated people, there is inactive DNA. How, is the, how does the DNA get activated? It gets activated via frequency. So let us talk about the substances, yes? Many are finding out and are reporting to all of you that there are things, there are electronics, there are physical beings, perhaps, inside these substances. What activates them? Frequency. You talk much about AI within your society. What is that? It's a frequency. How do you activate a computer with a frequency? It's all interrelated and it's all information. So we said to the one who came to us, yes, you are influenced by your DNA, but we want you to understand that when a belief is held and it's held by many, and then one people group is persecuted over another people group, that creates a reinforcing experience that then reinforces that belief, not just in the mind of an individual living in a moment who may live and die in a particular period of time, but within the actual cellular structure of your physical bodies being manifested. And the reason that is, is because they are frequential. You're having a perception that they're physical. If you could see them from our perception and your perception when you are not in a human body, you would see it's nothing but frequency. What we see when we look at you is not what you see when you look at one another. You see what you see because you are seeing within a certain band of frequency and you're having an experience that leads you to believe it's all physical. And it's real. It is real. Because that's the frequency you're dwelling at. That is reality within that frequency. And the same is true of your molecular structures of your body. You hold information in every cell of your being. Why do you think we're always teaching releasing, releasing, releasing the beliefs? As these frequencies are now intersecting your planet, your planet is literally traveling through a photon band of energy. 
You can find that upon your technology if you look. That is activating uh, via frequency aspects of your DNA. It's going to make you more intelligent. It's going to uh, enhance the multidimensional aspects of self. It's also going to cause much consternation and conflict within individuals and societies because one frequency cannot dwell with another frequency. A third dimensional frequency needs to be released in order for a fifth dimensional frequency to be able to come into the body and serve the body. When you're holding third dimensional beliefs, trying to intersect a fifth dimensional energy, you can expect that to be a chaotic experience. You understand? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, speaking of that, then, um, you know, briefly, Kelly was mentioning how you have spoken about the uh, human experience and how important it is to be able to allow ourselves to have the human experience. And there are so many aspects here on this planet that um, are here to allow us to do that. I'm curious what your take is or what you have to say around um, breath breathitarianism, because I know that uh, there are people who believe that in order to uh, be able to hold more light, they need to not eat food and not be as dense and uh, just exist off of air and sunlight, um, which I can't imagine is the truth. But what is your what is your take on that or what what wisdom can you impart on us around that we would entreat you to examine the belief that is at the foundation of the behavior one believes that in order to be more fully divine they need to act a certain way in the physicality with the body you're already source period that is our take on that Nothing in the human experience is stopping you from experiencing yourself as fully divine and fully human. These two things are meant to be together. They're meant to be experienced together. The human experience is not lower than the divine experience. It is a form of it. This is something that we are, hmm, our channel would say, passionate about. All of you believe your human experience is less than. And it's metaphysical beliefs that have fed you this lie. Why would you think any shape, form, experience you could possibly materialize for yourself as a divine being would be less than what you really are as source? It's only less than because it's what you believe. If you look at your bodies and you see them as lacking, oh, it lacks the light that is available to me, but oh, this is the requirement placed upon me. Sounds a lot like a religion, does it not? Now, are your bodies served in a certain way by how you treat them? Yes, but we would say to you, your beliefs have more to do with your health than what you put into your body ever will. That is the truth. Most of you disparage your bodies. You're in a constant war with your bodies. You think they're holding you back. You think they are the reason you are judged. Uh, you think they are not cooperating with you. We have ones who contact us in private session to say to us, Collective, I have been diagnosed with cancer. Can you tell me how to heal myself? And we talk to them about everything but the cancer. Because that's just a frequential reaction within the body to the frequency they're really dwelling at. Your bodies are being manifested via your frequency as a divine being. And your frequency as divine being in your perception of yourself as human, and we're saying that that way for a reason, your perception of yourself as being human, will affect what you manifest in your human reality. That includes your body, everything you're going to create, your relationships, every aspect of this perception you're having of this plane of existence. If we had to advocate health for you, we would say to you to love your bodies, to see them as an excellent creation that you have created in order for you to have an experience of yourself within this plane of ex existence that is tactile. That is all that they are. They are not the means by which you will win a lover 
They are not the means by which you will gain followers. They are not the means by which uh, you should be judging one another. You have fallen into a very low belief system upon the earth plane around all of that. When first you came to this plane of existence, you were ethereal beings. You manifested your own bodies. There was not even procreation in this plane of existence at that time. As you view linear time, time actually is concurrent. It is not linear. So we would say to you, this one, this type of person with this belief system that you are bringing to us, will behave according to their own beliefs. Now, if they really believed that, and they really believed it was really great for their body, and they really were able to sustain that high frequency, holding that belief with no disparagement against themselves or their body, they would be able to live in that human body that way. Yes. You are energetically holding together that human body in its current form for you to traverse the earth plane. Each of you are. The way that we would say this, many of you think that you are living within, uh, what is the word you use? Um, the matrix. Yes, there is this matrix. There is this computer program. And, you know, I'm just sensing myself within it. You know, we don't teach that. And the reason we don't teach that is if there's a matrix, you're the one creating it. You're not in a box somewhere, in a program somewhere, with no uh, limited, uh, with, with limited creative ability to impact what is around you. Many have watched this particular form of entertainment, this movie, and have misunderstood. Have misunderstood. You don't need to rise above anything. You just need to believe something that you're not currently believing. That's how you change your reality. And you can change your bodies the same way. Is instantaneous healing real? Yes. But there has to be a belief system behind it because you create with thought. Do you create your bodies with thought? Yes. Every moment of every day. Think of everything that is in your existence. You get up in the morning and you have your car in the garage and you have your job that you go to and you have your children and you have relationships with one another and maybe you're going to go to a store, you're going to buy something. Why is that store there when you drive up into the parking lot in the car that you own? Because your energy, your belief systems, subconsciously and consciously, are holding all of that together to be your reality. All of you are holding this plane of existence together, together, is what we're telling you. No one's doing this and sticking you here and trapping you here. What they have done is they have convinced you that all of this works in a way that it does not work and caused you, gave you the opportunity to go into resonance with lies about yourselves and one another and them. This plane of existence is being created by you, all of it. And until you really understand that and begin to exercise that knowing in your personal lives first, you will not realize it within your collective consciousness. You are individual divine beings as part of the one mind of source. You are a collective consciousness. You are not in subjugation to that consciousness. You are making a contribution to it. You are never separate from it. That does not mean it's running you. That means you are running it. Each of you individually. Why would source create a myriad of individual divine beings to have an experience through? Because Source understood that each of you would choose something different. Why have one experience when you can have many experiences? The individual feeds the collective consciousness, not the other way around. Does your collective consciousness come together in a powerful way sometimes and present to you opportunities for frequency and resonance and certain beliefs to be embraced? Oh, yes. It doesn't mean you have to go into resonance with any of it. It's what you choose to do. And in this way, you are underestimating, profoundly underestimating who and what you are. You understand? Oh, yeah. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I think to kind of cap it off with the final question that I think would be very empowering for everyone in the audience. 
since we are <laughs> shifting uh, belief structures around control uh, and moving into what I would call a state of surrender, letting go, um, full acceptance, uh, could you explain to us the mechanism of uh, the belief of acceptance, how that starts to shift reality uh, to one that is in more harmony, I would say, uh, for lack of a better word, to the individual's true um, desires of what they really want to create. Because I remember a time when uh, I was 31 and in a yoga class where I believed I was extremely inflexible and I believed that my body could only go so far (laughs) in a certain pose. And when I finally decided to be okay with, I was like, well, I guess this is just where my body can go. So I'm just going to be okay with it and not try to push it beyond this. That is when my body released and was able to go further than what I was expecting. And there was all of this um, motion and movement that was created that I wasn't expecting. So could you explain to us, since this is, to me, what I understand from my talk here with Kelly and with listening to you today, that, you know, the more that we can move into the state of acceptance and surrender away from needing to control things outside of us, that this is what really truly shifts our reality in many ways from what we're currently experiencing. Could you explain that? Hmm. We don't call it an accepting. And the reason that we don't, what we actually teach is contrast. So we will explain this. You know, you dwell at a particular frequency and you create from that frequency where you re- whether you realize you're doing it or not, and you create something specific in your life in a physical reality. You then have an experience of that again and again, because most beliefs you hold, all of you, uh, you hold them quite tightly. You don't hold them loosely. You don't look at them as experiences. Well, I've had this experience. I can now move on to another experience, another frequency. You really don't view it that way. You have a belief, you generate a frequency, something comes into materiality that is a match to that frequency. And then you call that your truth. And that reinforces the belief. So pretty soon you've been holding on to a belief for a while around things that really aren't true, that aren't serving you. Let us say you have um, relationships are a good example of this. Let us say that a woman decides, you know, I need to be with men. And I want to be with men. And, um, you know, I'm just really lucky to be with this man. I'm really glad that this man... uh, you know, loves me and I don't really feel very worthy of uh, other people to love me, this kind of thing, because you all have problems with this. That's why we're using it as an example. And you will draw one to you of a like belief. And this is part of, the, part of what you do not understand. What is the belief that the, the, that the other one, that the man goes into resonance with? Are you believing that you love yourself and you're worthy of love when you're believing that, you know, this is the only one who would love you? Yes, you will attract someone to you who will agree with you. This one will say to you, I'm the only one who would love you. That's resonance. Most of you believe, well, if I'm happy, I will attract happy people. And then when it doesn't happen, you're all disillusioned. Because that's not a, that's not a clear understanding of the physics principles that rule this plane of existence. Every belief you have is a belief about yourself. And in every situation you find yourself in that you want to transform, you must examine the beliefs around yourself, not everyone else. Many would say, well, she is the abused woman and he is the abuser. She is the victim and he is the perpetrator. Well, if you stop and think of it, it is frequency. She's holding a frequency of condemnation for self that he has gone into resonance with and he's really happy to feed that frequency of condemnation. And then an abusive relationship is born. Who first held the belief? Who can be blamed in your moral structure? Should they all be able to rise above this frequency that has borne abuse that's easy to say it's harder to do because she does not understand her problem is not that one is hitting her and she's allowing it the problem is that she holds a belief around herself that drew all that to her in the first place and that she's going to continue to draw that again and again and again until the contrast becomes such that she cannot do it anymore and that is the moment of realization That is not an accepting of that behavior. It is a releasing of it. When you have in your left hand what you have, 
and in your right hand you're able to envision what you want and you're able to do that because you are a creator being by the way where do you think your imagination comes from you're all able to envision something bigger grander nicer more beautiful than what you have why would you have the ability to do that because you have creative ability that is what that is born from that's how you envision it you're already using your creative ability when you can envision something you want that you don't currently have so you look at your life and you say here is what i have and here is what i want the yawning chasm between the two is the contrast and contrast is what you are experiencing right now upon the earth plane here we are as a society we thought we had one thing when in fact we had another we thought as we put these control structures into place that they would keep us safe well you didn't bear your control structures from a belief of safety and love for everyone no they were born of fear and that is exactly what they have borne out it's exactly what they're meeting out it's what you're now viewing as your contrast does that mean you are victims? No, you are not victims. You emitted a frequency that drew ones to you who were very happy to go into resonance with that frequency. And they have manipulated it because they understand frequency better than most of you. So how do you move beyond that? You accept it? It's not a matter of accepting it. It's a matter of understanding it's your reality because you are functioning at the same frequency as that reality. And again, we're not talking about happy. We're not talking about I'm kinder than other people. We're not talking about being more spiritual than the one next to you. These are your words. These are not our words. And when we say you are, we mean the human race, not just the one speaking to us in this moment. You have gone into resonance with a frequency. And you are seeing the evidence of the real frequency that you were holding when you did that. And now you are viewing your contrast. What is needful? Well, first you're going to have to understand you have to create what it is you want. And the first step in that is holding a belief. What do you want? All of you are so used to being at odds with one another, you don't even know what you want. I want a kinder world. Well, how does one create kindness? By holding a frequency of kindness, which is not a frequency of condemnation for anyone. Are we saying you need to love your control structures through it? No, we don't teach religion. We are saying you need to move your consciousness to a frequency that is not in resonance with a control structure. And when you do that, you will then naturally be drawing to self what is in resonance with your new frequency. And you may not even know what that's going to be. That's why all of you hold a belief that the universe brought it to you. Yes, I didn't create this. I didn't see, even see it coming. Well, yes, you did. You chose a frequency, and now what's coming is whatever dwells at that frequency within this material plane of existence. You've created every circumstance of your life. Don't thank the universe for that. You take credit for that, your creator being. You've created it with your frequency and your understanding of these physics principles. So we don't look at it as an accepting and when you use this word acceptance, we can tell you what ones are hearing, what many are hearing, is it's a religious principle. I just need to accept that it's there. I need to accept my, my mother being mean to me. No, you don't. You need to accept that she has the right to function at whatever frequency. And your real decision is, do you want to participate in that? That is what we are saying. Understanding. Can you, in and of yourselves, individually or even collectively, physically dismantle these control structures no you can't you don't need to you need to remove the resonant frequency so that they're no longer a part of your reality and see that's the rub because most of you don't believe that your reality can be different than what you see on the news or your friend talks to you about when they call you on the phone or what you see when you go to your work until you start believing you really are source and that you can adopt any frequency you want to adopt and any belief you want to adopt, you will not be able to create a new reality upon the earth plane. 
you are traveling through a photon band that is meant to help you. It is part of the cycles of the manifestation of this plane of existence that all of you are willingly and knowingly participating in, not just participating via the human life, but participating as divine beings holding together this energy that is this plane of existence. It can be anything you want it to be. First, you must make that decision in your own life. And many of you struggle even with doing that. What do I want? And when you begin to do that, your choice, your personal choice about your personal life will emit a frequency. And that frequency will then be in the earth plane, available to others to go into resonance with. And they will draw to them a like frequency. You know, the channeling is a good example. How do people find our channel? Well, there was one recently who posted and that helped, but there were many who knew of her previous to this. How do they find us? They meet someone who tells them. They see a little, a little something in a magazine, an article that our channel has written. Someone knows someone who knows someone else who eventually the information got to them. How did they draw it? No one is listening to us in this moment that you have not drawn us to you. You already know these things are true. We are here for the remembering. We are not here to teach you anything you don't know. We're here to help you to remember who and what you are. And when you want to know that, the information will come in many forms because you draw it to self with your frequency. That is how you create. That is how you create a personal reality. That is how you transform this plane of existence. And we want to absolve all of you of the responsibility of overhauling your civilization. Your civilization will be overhauled naturally. You are part of the one mind of source and intricately powerfully, energetically connected one to the other. All you need to do is to clean up your own life and your frequency will become part of the whole and influence it. And someone else's frequency, when they do their releasing, uh, they will then have a higher frequency to be emitting to the rest of the human race. And naturally, you will draw information about one another to one another. And you will begin to draw physical manifestations of things that dwell at that higher frequency. And it's all going to take care of itself. Your morality will not have brought this around. The transformation of your individual lives will be what has brought this change to this plane of existence. You understand? Yes, thank you very much for that wisdom. It's something that I think, as you said, many of us, there's a part of us that knows that, but uh, there's uh, some belief structures in the way that uh, need to be shifted. So thank you so much for your time and for sharing all of your information with us today. Really appreciate it. We appreciate the opportunity to do the teaching and the mentoring. We love you and we love you. And we will see you soon. Okay, everyone. Well, Kelly takes her time coming back to us. Uh, I hope you all really felt the importance behind these messages. As I mentioned to you before, they are not the fluff your aura kind of messages. They're very empowering, important message for this time, for this body, for this experience, and for you to enact in this reality at this moment right now. <clears throat> hi kelly <laughs> hello <laughs> I, I hope you have some water near you if you need it or i do thank you <laughs> that was wonderful um thank you for allowing <clears throat> that to come through you for us today i really appreciate it and i know that takes a lot of energy you know it does but i'm happy to do it and it has a. Uh... It has so impacted my own life. For all of you listening, I just want you to know I am literally a different person today than I was five, five years ago. There were some things in my life that really needed to shift and other things in my life that were really great that also have been elevated. And um, just hear them out. I guess that's what I have to say. You know, not everything they say feels good. It's not meant to. It's meant to get you to think 
to think like the divine being you already are, to wake up that part of you that knows that what you're hearing is the truth and to begin to have a dream again of what our world can be and not be drugged down by the current circumstances into believing it's never going to change. We instituted all of this to begin with and we can change it. It just needs to be transformed and to know that that can happen just in your personal life and that is an excellent contribution to be making to the whole is the is the part of the collective's message that is so important to me. You know, when they first asked me to be their channel, I didn't know one single person to channel to. I didn't know anyone who would ever listen to me. I didn't have any metaphysical friends at all. And just through being willing to do it, through holding the intention that this would be what I would eventually do, people came into my life in a variety of ways that were pretty amazing, actually. And, you know, now we're out there in 10 countries. How did that happen when I didn't know anyone? It's frequency. You know, I'm a really good example of what they're talking about, not because my life is perfect. My life is not perfect, and I'm not completely without fear any more than anyone else is. It's just that I've made room in the last five years for better things to come by releasing beliefs that don't serve me and by not believing that what I see around me is my only choice. Mm. So that would Very be what powerful. I would want to leave people with is, uh, you know, they bring a powerful message and sometimes mm -hmm. it's even a little difficult to understand it. Listen to this more than once if you need to do that. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> I highly recommend it. If for nothing else, it's just, it's a total vibration raiser, you know? <laughs> like you yeah. can feel, you can feel it, it working your energy field. And remember that all they're doing is helping you to remember. You already know mm -hmm. this information, all of us do. Yeah. It's just the remembering. It's just for someone to say it at a frequency and in a way that we can internalize it and begin to act upon it. That's what's most important. I agree. I agree. And I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. I've been so excited to have you on. I'm so glad we finally were able to connect and do this. Can you please let my audience know um, where they can find you and what you have going on? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, you can find me at kellythebo.com. And uh, right now we're not on social media, to be really honest with you. That was one of the beliefs I needed to release. I needed to release a belief around having a computer programming degree and um, believing that that was a lower vibration to be participating in all of that. Uh, that was a bias I was holding that in these circumstances that we have been experiencing, the collective has helped me to release that. Uh, so we're going to be launching on social media in 2022, which is coming up rapidly. And uh, we'll be on a variety of platforms. We're going to launch a podcast. Hopefully we'll have Nicole on. Oh, <laughs> She's willing to return to. the favor. I would oh, love to I have her on. To. I would be honored. Yeah. And we're going we're gonna to start being out there in a more public way. Uh, for now, you can go to kellythebo.com. There is a link at the top of the page um, that has uh, free channels. There's, I think, nine free channels in there, hours and hours of good channel material that you can listen to, some of it that goes back to our early days uh, right up into our most recent free webinar. We do have a membership for $14.99. That is a five-year library of channeling that you get with that membership. And you can download those channels, listen to them in your car, on the way to work, whatever you're doing, uh, running, running errands, doesn't matter. We have a monthly membership webinar that goes along with that, uh, where you get to come uh, be with the collective every month and ask whatever you want to ask. And we handle as many questions as we can within that hour to an hour and a half. We have a really interesting um, webinar series coming up that is launching on the 10th of November that I would recommend you check out. It's under webinars on the website. It's called The Collective Perspective. And what we've done with this particular offering is it is a way for you to ask the collective specifically about current events. So the participants in that particular offering uh, send to me every week articles, blogs, videos, whatever they can find that they would like the collective to comment on. And they submit questions with that. We choose the top five in every week that the collective wants to deal with. And we bring that to you and uh, do a teaching on it that's an hour and a half long with those five topics. So I have gotten rave reviews on that. Lots and lots of people participating in that. The other thing we do is we share all the links of what you submit on the content page for that webinar series so that you can be sharing the information with other people as well. And I kind of came up with that format, looking for a way to help out, to help people to get to the information that they need in these times and not to do that for people, but to provide a forum where they can do it for one another. That was important to me uh, that we not just be throwing information at people's heads and have them not engaged in that process. 
So the collective perspective is something quite unique. Uh, we do have a course that we're running right now called Time to Heal for people who want to go out and to make a contribution in a more public way to be working with the collective one-on-one -on -one and mentoring with that. We sold that out in two days, but I can tell you that we'll be running it again and we are considering a second track. If enough people hear this message and maybe mm -hmm. are interested in that, you want to jump on the website, uh, send me uh, comments with the form on the website. You know, Kelly, I'd be interested if you ran a second track of that. That would be nice to know. I think that we can fit that into our schedule if we had enough people who are interested. Okay. So uh, that's what we have right now. We always have free webinars. Make sure you sign up for the newsletter because that will be how you find out about everything we're doing. So. Oh. Wonderful. And I will, of course, leave all the links in the video below and in the show notes for all of you listening in iTunes, Spotify, and any other podcast app out there. Kelly, thank you so much for being on the show. Such a pleasure. Uh, this is this is like, oh, wow, it's, we're going into two hours almost. This has been wonderful. Thank you for sharing your light. Thank you for sharing your perspective, your experience, and for uh, bringing the collective through for us today. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you, Nicole, and thanks for all you're doing as well. You're doing beautiful work. Thanks so thank much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to the audience for being with us once again. Guys, I love you so much. Have a wonderful evening, and I'll be back with you next week.